I recently got invited down to EA to be one of the first people to try out their new headline feature for the F1 23 game, F1 World. And I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about this feature and how it will change the way we play these games, answering all your questions about the mode from how it will work to is it a pay to win scheme and ultimately why it will make you play this year's game way longer than any F1 game before it. First off, is F1 World just F1 Life 2.0? Well, yes, but also no. F1 Life, as we know, was a massive disappointment and the most nothing feature a game has ever created. And whilst F1 World still has implemented the visuals we saw from last year with the menu screen, supercars and driver customization, this is where the similarities end. F1 World is so much more detailed and offers non-stop playtime. And whilst F1 Life felt detached from the rest of the game, F1 World is linked to everything you do on F1 23. So what exactly is F1 World? It's an on and offline progression mode where you compete in challenges, online races and time trials to unlock upgrades for your car, learn how to drive cleanly and even collect stickers. Now, hear me out. Yes, it sounds like a gimmick, but believe me, it's worth it and actually quite fun. You also have your own F1 World car that can be upgraded as you work your way through the game mode, completing challenges for prizes or claiming them through the pit lane pass. Your tech level will determine how good your car is, starting off at tech level 100 with the potential to upgrade to tech level 1000. The best way to think of this is everybody starts with a non-upgraded Williams from career mode with the goal to unlock upgrades to have a fully upgraded Red Bull. Your tech level will also determine the events you can take part in and the drivers you are matched with. Your goals for each race are also decided by your tech level with the highest in the lobby expected to finish on the podium and the worst expected to finish in the top 15 but tech level isn't everything better drivers with a lower tech level can still beat those with a higher tech level and you will be given more rewards for doing this the tech level cap will change each season with season one being 1000 and whilst we don't know what the cap will be in season two but can imagine it to be something like 1500 or even 2000 giving those players who have already maxed out their car more reason to keep on playing and if you want to see lots of F1 World content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. What events can you take part in? Well, there are three main areas to play in F1 World. Series, solo and multiplayer events, and ranked multiplayer. Series is all offline races and teaches new casual players all the important elements to driving an F1 car and being able to slowly turn off assists. Once you complete all the series currently available to you, more will be unlocked, giving you a huge amount of challenges to take on and rewards to win. Each series also comes with a recommended tech level and your rewards for beating the objective in those will be determined by the difference in tech level between them and yourself. In solo and multi multiplayer you have a range of challenges quick race is short five lap races at either a random track or a track of your choosing against other drivers online each race week will have a online community race and this is the same as the current community races that are on f122 featured again will be focused around the real life calendar it's spain this week so we have a spanish gp hot lap challenge and a random event which this time is to complete a 35 percent race at spain with no osd and in solo you have quick races using both official cars and f1 world cars pirelli hot laps using supercars scenario modes time trial challenges wet weather grand prix and finally a short offline championship and as for ranked well more on that later the rewards that can be given out in these events are cash insight key insight critical insight setup data track data tire data and stickers with the data and how much you can earn determined by the event an event with one arrow won't give much but an event with three is going to give you a significant amount of that data these rewards can be used to manufacture car parts hire team members create contracts and buy stickers in the compendium you'll also unlock all of these from the events too and can be applied to your car whenever you want if you have unwanted car parts that may be a lower tech level than you currently are you can disassemble these for rewards to create new parts team members will work in the same way except a contract has to be applied to them and these contracts are easy to come by just from playing the game each part and team member have their own tech level and bonuses that can be applied during races 
years. For example, here I hired Theo Rita as an R&D head with this contract that gives me plus 18 engine power for 60 seconds after a fastest sector one which was then applied in my very next race at Australia. All the bonuses will appear below the OSD and will highlight green when active. You can also check what bonuses are active in the multifunctional display. And here it also states what you need to achieve in the race to activate them. You'll also unlock stickers as you play the game, giving you information on drivers, teams, and the sports history in general. These aren't just visual though. Every time you complete a picture, rewards and upgrades will be unlocked so do not ignore these. I, for one, am addicted to collecting things like this, so if we get to 2,000 likes on the video, I'll try to complete the book on a stream or a video. Included in F1 World is a full goals system with long-term and short-term goals, where more rewards can be unlocked. You are also introduced to vendors who you can buy specific goals from using the in-game cash, and these will give you bigger upgrades and rewards. For example, I wanted to do some laps on the new Qatar circuit, so bought the drive 50 miles in any game mode at Asia or Oceania tracks. Jumped into time trial, drove Qatar, which is so much fun, by the way. Once I'd done the 50 miles, my rewards were there to be redeemed, getting my money back and more, as well as some XP, insight, and many more rewards. With F1 World, safety rating and ranked play are completely different now, with your safety rating license level allowing you what type of racing you can compete in, and the higher the level your license is, the more events and prizes you will unlock. Your license will change based on what you do within the F1 World area, with clean laps increasing your level and corner cutting crashes and penalties decreasing it. Your license is also visible for all to see, so drive Drivers who like to troll and grief other online players will be notable with their D license and can easily be kicked from the lobby. This system can be turned off in offline mode though, so if you fancy taking your frustrations out on the AI, you can do so without the worry of harming your license. Ranked play is its own thing this year as well, with drivers entering a weekly table of 100 drivers of the same level as them, competing to score the most points across that week, starting off in bronze. Players can move up the order to silver one and two, then to gold one, two, and three. From here, you can actually be demoted if in the lowest section of that 100. But if you can be promoted higher than gold, you will reach elite, where you will stay and compete for points to reach the top player on F1 23. At the end of each season, this will reset and everyone will start again in bronze with seasonal prizes given out for how well you did. The top drivers each week in their group can even go up a couple of ranks at once, allowing them to reach elite even quicker. All cars in ranked play are equal F1 23 cars, making it fair for everyone, but rewards can be earned for F1 World here, and your license will be affected too, depending on how you drive. Ranked play will also only focus on free races per week, allowing you to maximize your skills across a specific selection of tracks. The biggest question I feel like everyone wants to know is, is F1 becoming a pay-to-win game? And the simple answer is no. There will be transactions in the game, such as buying pit coins to purchase customizable items like liveries and helmets, as examples, or purchasing the VIP section of the pit lane pass. In here, you will have the chance to unlock more of these items, and there will be upgrades here as well as real-life team members like Gunther Steiner or Franz Tost. But to get these, it will still require you to play the game to unlock these items, stopping players from never turning a lap and still having a maxed out 1000 tech level car. Unlike previous games, you also can't just purchase tiers of the pit lane pass. Instead, you can buy an XP boost, which will help you to progress through the pit lane pass quicker, but again, you still have to play the game for it to be worthwhile. Do not worry though if this isn't to your fancy. All the normal online and offline modes are still in the game. League racing will not be affected by this, nor will career modes. For me personally, F1 World was a lot of fun and definitely something I'll be exploring a lot when F1 23 is released. And I really do believe it will keep people playing the game way beyond the usual drop-off three months in.